The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. Here's Brandon. All right, greetings again, boys and ghouls. As the Brandon Peters Spook Show continues its carousel of horror through the first season of Tales from the Crypt. Joining me today for the tale, Lover Come Hack to Me, is co host of Halloween Never Dies podcast, oh, <laughs> of Halloween Never Dies podcast, Pacing Pete. You thought I was going to say Sabita. But it's Pacing Pete. Welcome. Uh, sorry to disappoint your audience, but it is me, uh, Pacing Pete. Thank you for having me on, Brandon. Uh, I know we've been trying to do this for a while, so mm-hmm. thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it more than you know. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, so yeah, now I've, I've had the come full circle with the Halloween Never Dies. I've been on that. Both of you now have been on the show. It's October. It's time to get Pacing Pete on here. So awesome. It's a spooky time, man. It's a spooky, it's a spooky time. time. So how are things with Halloween Never Dies coming along? Things are good. Uh, we, we've uh, both had uh, jobs in our lives that have kind of pushed things back for us. So we've actually remodified our format. So originally when we started the pod, we were planning to record uh, once a month up until Hollywood ha- Halloween Kills, um, you know, like a retrospective, like going through each movie. Mm-hmm. And, and we did that for the most part, but our schedules started getting crazy around the summertime. And so we kind of fell back on that to the point where we stopped recording and we did like kind of a di- uh, adjustment of our format. So we're going to extend the podcast. We're going to not record as uh, frequently as we wanted to, but we're still going to record uh, leading up to Halloween ends next year, which I'm mm-hmm. kind of like, man, I, sh- I don't know why I didn't think about doing that before, but, um, but uh, me and Sabina have, have talked about it and we're like, you know, it, it makes more sense if we cover the other movies leading up to Halloween ends and then just do some, you know, podcasts like we're going to be recording our Halloween Kills uh, review soon. Uh, we're also going to be recording other Halloween themed episodes, which I'm sure we'll probably give you a call and have you come back because I know that it's mm-hmm. so much fun talking to you about Halloween and all things Michael Myers. So uh, that's pretty much where the podcast stands right now. Cool, cool. Very exciting. Do other other slashers don't let it yes don't halloween never dies should never die there you go agreed extend it and michael will always be back so the show can man no matter what no matter what i i I predict 2028's when we'll see him again after halloween ends no matter how (laughs) big if halloween ends ends up being huge i still think that because that franchise loves itself an anniversary so well, you know, Halloween Resurrection happened, and they still brought him back. So they you know, still, anything's, yeah, anything's possible. Oh yeah, they. <laughs> they and they, they, in the meantime, they were trying to bring it back with Busta a few times too. So yes. <laughs> oh gosh, I, oh, I re- reading about those. I'm like, ooh, oh, oh, yeah. they were they were really high on that guy over there. But good for him. Good for Busta. Yeah, Rhymes. no kidding. Yes, um, agreed. Yeah. So uh, tales from the crypt. This is a, I've been bringing people on, and you know what everybody's got a history with tales from the crypt they all sort of sound the same but i don't care i like hearing about them um did you grow up watching tales from the crypt at all or yeah um i remember even you know sneaking down to the front room at Mm -hmm. 10 or 11 o'clock at night nine ten years old uh you know sneaking it you know everyone's asleep uh trying to catch the crypt keeper uh right you know and I, i think part of it was just Part of it was like, you know, I'm little and I'm I'm, I'm going to do something that you're not supposed to do. I'm going to watch something scary. I shouldn't mm-hmm. be watching at my age. But also it was like just the Crypt Keeper was just like a, a draw, you know, right, the Crypt yeah. Keeper. And, and, you know, I don't know if it was the laugh or the way he told his stories or set up the stories that they were going to tell. But I've always, um, I haven't watched in a long time, but I definitely, the younger Pete loved Tales from the Crypt. You know, I, I, I loved it so much. And, and so it was nice that I got to revisit this episode that, that we're going to talk about today. Yeah. And the Crypt Keeper, I mean, there was an appeal with children of him. Obviously we were all yes. like enamored because he yes. got a Saturday morning cartoon. Yes, <laughs> <I did. I'm- laughs> that was back when they liked to give kids like 
cartoon versions of R-rated things, like the Rambo <laughs> cartoon, RoboCop. Like we were, oh we're man, like, we know you can't see them, but here's the video game, here's the cartoon, <laughs> here's the action figures, and yeah, yeah, we got fed so much with marketing of that stuff, it was ridiculous. It was, yeah, it was a weird, <laughs> weird time. It really was. It'd be like it'd be like now if they're like, hey, it's uh, saw the game show on Nickelodeon for get oh, out of the room. <laughs> kids or the nerf gun might hit you in the face like that i wouldn't be surprised if scott if, if uh if um what's his name summers tried to pitch that show to nickelodeon all right okay. <laughs> mark summers that's right but so it's a weird full circle as we had you know yeah. saw saw inspires escape rooms that are a yes. phenomenon which inspires a movie escape room <laughs> which is like wait what a minute wait a minute huh all right <laughs> i do like the escape room movies they're not bad they're not bad. And this, the so the new escape room, Pete, since I was on your show talking about um, Halloween 6, which had the two cuts, the notorious two. Yes. There are, escape room 2 is the Halloween 6 producer's cut of escape room movies because oh, that's funny. the Blu-ray has another cut of the film way different. Like, I don't know how this happened, wow. but there, are, there is actors and stuff that are not present in that original version there's people from the original version that aren't in it the first act of the movie is a completely different movie and the final act is a completely different movie and there's a couple scenes in between but it is it's way different like they call it extended cut it, it that's underselling it, it is so different <laughs> well that's piqued my interest i gotta check it out now. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a it's a decent two and a half three star movie but just watch it twice i'll say this when you get to the part where the escape room stuff begins like with the main the main crux of this movie you could probably if you've watched it once right you skip through to uh the end of the penultimate escape room trap it's like a new york city thing which was in the trailer once they get through that then it's a completely different movie so <laughs> nice all right good time. but yeah, Escape Room 2, Tournament of Champions, great title, now on Blu-ray and awesome. digital. So, awesome. But, uh, yeah, so I brought you on here to call, talk about the episode, which is episode five in this first season called Lover Come Hack to Me. Uh, it's directed by Tom Holland, written by Michael McDowell, and starring Amanda Plummer, Stephen Shellen, Lisa Figgis, and Richard Eden. It's about the mousy and wealthy Peggy who wants to make sure her honeymoon turns out perfect though her new husband may have alternative plans. Uh, Tom Holland, like these, the thing with Tales from the Crypt is great, is big names everywhere on it. Like Tom Holland, he, he, he will do, go on to do two more Tales from the Crypt, but he also, uh, you know, this guy brought his child's play, Fright Night. He wrote Psycho yes. 2, which is impressively a good movie. It had no business being good. It was. <laughs> he did that little uh, movie, The Beast Within, which is one of those... 80s horror movies just notable for a transformation. Oh, um, and that movie, Cloak and Dagger, got him. Yeah, um, you got McDowell here who wrote 11 episodes of Tales from the Dark Side. Uh, he did an episode of 80s Alfred Hitchcock presents, so he's well esteemed in anthology television horror, but he's a writer of Beetlejuice and The Nightmare Before Christmas and the Stephen King's Thinner adaptation, and then of course. Amanda Plummer, who surprisingly hadn't done So I Married an Axe Murderer yet before this movie. <laughs> but so, yeah, these just big names. Um, well, even which, on the producer front, I saw it was like Richard Donner. Richard and Donner, Joel, Walter Hill, Silver, David Geiler. I'm, like, I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, these are like big names. These aren't like, you know, you know, it's that that was just that that kind of blew my mind. Yeah. You know, like, uh, who was who was behind the camera on this? Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a star in one of these. Like it's, it's crazy. It's yeah. just big and HBO, it's good to show HBO has always been attractive to movie stars. Because, I mean, nowadays, you uh, doesn't matter. Big screen, small screen, you, you, the quality project takes a job. But back in the day, there used to be a big difference between movie stars, TV stars. Movie stars never went back to TV once you got that big movie gig. But they would go do Tales from the Crypt, which was quite interesting. And, you know, like, yeah, this first season has nothing but named directors, uh, the previous episode was Howard Deutsch, who did um, uh, some kind of wonderful Pretty in Pink. Uh, and, wow. you know, it started with Walter Hill. Richard Donner did the third episode. There's uh, Mary Lambert will do the next one. She's Pep Cemetery, And just so much just it's it's uh, like, wow. Like when I was a kid, I didn't realize this. Like Zemeckis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Zemeckis is a producer on this, too. Yeah. 
just that was cool i mean like reading that like tom holland directed it i was like wow that i mean like when i you know i, I fright night was such a huge part of my childhood right yeah that yeah like, like and i definitely got like some vibes from that um but uh yeah like it was it's cool it's always cool to see like directors even though it's within the same genre like you know mm -hmm. do something like a little different um you know and and we'll get into it but um you know it was it's so entertaining to watch and then just knowing who's behind the camera to make it it makes it that much better yeah uh, it, yeah it's and it, yeah competently directed people who have fun like this is like the stuff they grew up on maybe yeah. they read these comics or maybe they just liked anthology yeah. twilight zone stuff um this one like really weird like i, I watched when i watched it so i was like i gave it to you i hadn't watched it yet but i just was handing these episodes out to guests and i was like whoa so i get pete one was like one long soft soft core sex scene that was like a lot of this turned into that um <laughs> well i will say though i will say like as even though it was like i will say it was done tasteful like yeah. it, what it did they did it, it for like a, a really long sex scene they didn't yeah. over sexualize the female character the no and girl, she's she's know? she's clothed the whole time like she you yeah, never never was, see you know, mm -hmm. no you don't see anything and, and uh, you would think at some point you're going to see something and no like the camera veered away or you know that that moment where you know they focus on the clock mm -hmm. you know and, and you know it's just um I, I thought that would to me that stuck out i was like okay so they're going for story they're not going to just show you right nudity on, in, in this scene and they give you the sex uh with her in the position of power that's where yes. the chain the hands change because you get this story of this gold digging guy who in terms of like attractiveness he is the poster child of like oh like the romance novel covers like, like a, Fabio, a Fabio. yeah that's exactly what he's trying to be uh, they're trying to get i'm not i've seen this guy in a lot of stuff apparently according to his imdb and stuff but like i <laughs> i didn't know he was and i i think he kind of hampers this from this is pretty good but it, a better performance in that role maybe it's a little bit greater i don't know if he handles yeah. some of the stuff well uh but he this is like the got a lot of classic tropes the driving down the road, the rainy and the log of the road, where's this house? Things are set up already. Um, kind of, a, I really like the way Tom Holland shoots this house. It's nice and yeah. creepy and um, yes. just, it, it really works. And you got, of course, Chekhov's ax on the, on the wall. Um, yes. But yeah, it, it focuses on like, she's this mousy little, like, it, it looks like, oh, a hot guy finally came around so she's taking and he knows what he's doing there's a, a mother that's obsessed like oh you you're she i know what you're up to and so he's up yeah. to something like there's a gun in the you'd think he's gonna kill her on this trip but she transforms when she like they're gonna sleep together for the first time she never slept with him and she comes out yeah and she's, Kind of it's it's like that Zaza Zoom moment, you know, mm -hmm. and he's like, and he even he is like taken aback, like this isn't what I was expecting, you know, and and I, I think it's interesting having him as the gold digger, like yeah. just because if you think of the time period, like it's it's actually it's like a you know that's it was you know things like that were given more to the girl, right, and roles right. like that, and so I thought that was kind of a cool gender re gender reversal, you right? Know, yeah, you don't, you don't normally see that, um, and then you set her up in the power position, like you were saying, mm -hmm. in the moment when they're having sex, and then you, and then just from there, she completely takes control of the whole situation, and he sees everything unfold, and he's kind of like, "What's going on?" You know, has that whole like mind blowing moment. Yeah, and they, I mean, you see him like she transforms and he transforms like he all of a sudden is like into her all of a sudden yeah, like it, it yeah. went from like wait a minute what like and, it's like she threw on love potion number nine or something <laughs> right yeah he's, he's <laughs> like wait maybe i don't want to do this and uh we also get the he wakes in the he has a nightmare in the middle of the night or where he nightmare experience something where he sees her yeah. with another guy and basically doing what just happened and they after she tells him oh i'm pregnant now and kills um he realizes what he was watching was her mother doing that to her father which is it, it, some weird family traditions going on there and it, it's funny because like in the very beginning of that when they're when they find the house right mm -hmm. and and she's like 
you know, and they're getting soaked because it's raining and, and he's trying to get into the house and they find the key and she's all, um, are you going to like walk me? Are you going to pick me up and carry me over the threshold? Yeah. And I was like, that's such a weird choice for like right now. Like it's pouring. You walk up to this old creepy house and you, and your first thought is to carry you in like, like, you know, honeymoon style. And mm-hmm. then it's not until that we see everything unfold that you're like, oh, this yeah. was tradition. This was kind of their weird family tradition, you know, no matter, you know, right, yeah. she, she was going to kill the, the, the guy. Right. And and this kind of goes back. It reminded me of this is like a modern version of like a classic, um, like a, a hammer AIP type movie. But it would be done in like a more gothic period style mm-hmm. where the, something like Crimson Peak, that that yeah. type of story that they're trying to tell here. And it's interesting to see it in a 80s aesthetic. Um, probably because you know the money's not there to do a complete period piece, <laughs> uh, but it's it's interesting to to see from that angle, and uh, I really like kind of mirrored that seeing that and just watching uh, these things like get put in play that do pay off, but not in the way you saw you thought they would uh, in certain fashions, and um, seeing the gun the bullets lined up and not being able to, to shoot and it's just kind of kind of tw- it's nice twisted and amanda plumber if it's not for her i don't know if this sells as well because she is really good at batshit crazy yeah because she has that whole like and that's the great payoff at the at the end when she reveals really who she is mm-hmm. is she plays this kind of shy you know uh who she she reveals herself to be a virgin and she's you know she's uh, this innocent person and then you know we have that moment in the bedroom when she completely transforms and then you have her completely completely transforming into you know killing the, the husband and, mm-hmm. and you no know, she has a fantastic performance and her performance really does sell that scene and and yeah I kind of agree with you that the guy like didn't totally like sell his performance like mm-hmm. just because there were times when they're having when they're talking and she was like you know, her, her the sincerity in her lines where she would be like, you only marry me with my money came through, I think pretty well. But mm-hmm. then he was just like, yeah, uh, no, no, I, uh, I, I totally didn't marry you for that reason. Like, I don't know. Like, I think that could have been done a little bit better. Maybe yeah. I'm being nitpicky, but I was just like, oh gosh, like sell it a little bit more, man. Like right. make, make her believe you, you are in love with her, but don't, you know, he's yeah, too he obvious would... to her. Like, it's <sighs> yes, like, yeah, that's, yes. that's what, yeah. It's like, yeah. we, we know what you're doing. You don't have to sell us. You need to sell her. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Cause like when the gun comes out, it's like, Oh, well that was, uh, it's like, just tell her you're going to shoot her. Why don't you like, <laughs> she's but, like, he's like, your, your aunt might've done this, you know, and he was like pinning it on everything, but it wasn't believable. I'm like, gosh, man, like make, make her believe like she, you know, and that's the ironic part of, of her character is she doesn't buy anything that he's saying. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and and even though she set him up to do this whole weird tradition thing where right. she sleeps with him so she can get pregnant and just carry on that weird sick family tradition. Um, How uh, does she know never... she conceived? That's what I was like. It's a bit. I know you went Maybe all through the, the night, folks, small. but yeah, <laughs> I know you guys went all through the night, but that's not how. I mean, you got to might want to be she might be getting married a few more times before it works, but. It reminded me of uh, mid midsummer when uh, yeah <laughs> yes oh my god like, yeah I, can... I did think about that now that you said that I did remember myself <laughs> watching this yesterday and thinking about that I was like oh yeah it's like midsummer without the audience without the weird creepy the woman cult. pushing on yeah. the yes. oh god <laughs> yes. oh man oh that's yeah, hilarious definitely I I do like that I mean he, while his performance vocally and facially may not work but like the physical contrast I love, like he is this hulking giant. She's this little yeah. twiggy mouth. And then when it comes to the violence or attacking, she's got this giant ax to wield and he's got a little pissed, you know, a little revolver. And it, it's just, it's kind of a funny balance right there. And then she chops him up. Like he should be the one wielding the ax and she's got the, the gun to go pow. And just the, well, again, the reversal goes- there. Yeah. Again, like, yeah, it's a gender reversal thing. Like, mm-hmm. like the whole nine, you know, with yeah. her, him being the gold digger, him holding the gun instead of having the big ax, like it's a complete reversal, but it works. And, and her performance, I think just sells the whole thing because she, like I said earlier, like she goes from sweet and innocent to this like crazy sadistic woman who's carrying mm-hmm. on her family's tradition. Yeah. And she, I mean, not to 
perversion would have been like she's the dominating one in the bed. Would yes. you think this guy would just, you know, be with you? Was it? Uh, yeah, which way the gym or whatever? But <laughs> yeah, it, it's really it, as much as just like I said, like it's it. This does focus around a really long, soft, soft core sex scene because there's no nudity. Um, but this is like, hey, we are HBO. We can we can get down. We don't have commercials. We don't have to cut to anything. Um, and it's just, you'd watch it, but then they like the, the clock glass breaks because they're so loud there. So there's something paranormal maybe going on, but that's what I was wondering too. I was, you know, when that happened, it, it, you know, clearly like they're, they're like, she's screaming like really loud. So like, it, for me, it got to the point where I was like, okay, is this like, is this part of her deal? Like, is she, is this some, like you said, paranormal, like, is there mm-hmm. something extra going on there that right. is causing that to happen? It can't be just because she's loud you right know what i mean but then again like a lot of these i we're not supposed to uh question i guess true true uh we're supposed to just i mean watch it and then forget about it when taxi cab confessions comes on right after <laughs> like you know like it's a 30 minute like you know uh like little tv sh- comic book horror show right. escape you know, mm-hmm. that's what it was. That's what, that's what all the tales of the crypt, tales from the crypt was. It, it's about then. the, it's about the, you know, the, the journey. And then the end is about the shock and, yes. or the, the sick twist. And that's all it needs to be. Have some funny characters, some joke. Like it's, it's a really loose show. I mean, I think I, when I was a kid, it, it came off a little bit more serious a lot oh, of the yeah. times, but I, I've, I've been amused at like the kind of like comic nature to it. Like it's, it's, uh, darkly comedic more than i ever realized back then and it's like twisted and kind of mean too i mean crypt keepers crypt keepers a mean guy um but i've I've kind of enjoyed kind of enjoyed that about it um but yeah this one very very interesting uh and it was just fun i'm like oh did they get amanda Plummer? because so i married an axe murder was years later okay um (laughs) and the pulp fiction was years later when she's all crazy but um yeah she's a pretty like she disappeared i mean she still works but i mean she used to be in a lot more um mainstream or stuff that would come across back then then be nice to see her back in things a lot more she was in something uh, not too long ago i can't remember that i was like oh crap it's amanda Plummer. but um yeah they're back when she i think she was starting to make a climb into more public things but yeah um, this was a this is a solid a solid one. I, it's a um, definitely um, probably say most adult of the ones if you're going sexually with it. <laughs> not not on the violence violence end, but the guy does get chopped up. I thought he was gonna get beheaded, um, but yeah, they just do the whole like just cut over and over. It, it becomes like a slasher. You yeah, know, it, it teeters that that line of being paranormal and slasher because mm-hmm. you're like, am I gonna get like a haunted house? Uh, you know, and then you know it turns into like her him seeing that flash or flashback and he's mm-hmm. like is this she a ghost and then she ends up slashing him up and so yeah it's it's a nice little mix of things that's what i, I think it's one of the things i liked about it too yeah super fun super fun um and it's been a super fun weekend it's been super fun having you on here pete um uh so i appreciate you coming on that'll do it for this one uh we have one more to go and that's tomorrow and they'll complete the week of end the season for it's only six episodes this first season of tales from the crypt um but hey uh again thanks and tell um so uh before you go let people know where they can keep up with you what you got going on what's coming up uh well uh as i said earlier um you know, uh, I'm a co-host of Halloween Never Dies with my co-host Sabina Graves. You can find me on Twitter at Pacing Pete, uh, on Instagram at, P- at Pacing Pete, and the Halloween Never Dies pod on Twitter and on Instagram. Brandon, thank you so much for letting me come on no and problem. talk with you. And and I definitely would love to do it again. Um, for sure, yeah. Like we have great conversations. We did that here. We did that on our Halloween podcast. So um, right off the bat, the Halloween podcast before we recorded, it's like, oh. I know, right. We were, just, we were talking already. <laughs> <laughs> we could add a, a separate recording, but, but yeah, thank you. Uh, this was fun and I can't wait to do it again. All right. Excellent. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at brand 4 khd written work at why so blue.com to back again tomorrow for the finale of this run collection completed uh, till then stay film positive. Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. 
Announcer vocals by Jessica Alsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetersshow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetershow.com. The show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found.